Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling a Zim Bureau. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take a look at what's new in Zim 015. That's at zimjs.com here. We can press on the Zim 015, and that goes into a page here with a bunch of new stuff. And here is what we're looking at, the texture active. Wow. So we're so excited uh, by this feature. This allows Zim to be put on a texture and be interactive inside of 3JS. So there's all sorts of things to look at here. What we may do is break this up and look at a few of them and then do another bubbling on the next batch. Uh, let's try one, shall we? Here's the first one we did. And when we press, we are now in 3JS, like so. Cool, huh? And we can operate Zim. Wow. Isn't that amazing? That is so cool. So we have Zim on a texture, and that texture can go on any material, on any, uh, on any geometry as a mesh. In other words, we can be on cubes, we could be on models, we can be on cylinders, spheres, etc. And they can be interactive for interfaces, but also for things like games and puzzles. So it's very exciting. Here we've got two of them. We've got one plane right here, and we've got a plane right here on the back. This one is not interactive, and this one is interactive, like so. Uh, by default, we make the backing of the plane uh, work with the orbit controls. It doesn't have to, and we make these things not work with orbit controls. And are you ready for our next trick? <laughs> bum, bum, bum. If you hit the T key, or indeed hit the, the logo here, boop, it pops you right into Zim. So it hides 3JS and shows you what is being read in from Zim. So this is the actual Zim right here, and if I change that to green and put it down here on the left and come back, it's green down here at the left. Isn't that cool? If I go pink and put it up there at the right, it's pink up there in the right. So in other words, it's live. This little slider right here slides you through all of your texture active parts. So right now there's only two of them. That's the back and this is the front. <laughs> Shall we look at another? Yeah, why don't we, in this bubbling, look through uh, a couple, and then at some point we probably want to look at the code, and maybe we'll split that. So we'll do a second bubbling uh, looking at the code. And for now, let's see, what do we want to do? We want to look at another one here. So this is a first-person view. So the last one was orbit controls. This is first-person. And what we've done is we put the texture active right here, um, in the camera. So as part of the camera and therefore everywhere we look we can see the texture active. Since then we developed a HUD system where we use an ortho camera and we put anything that we want to stay on the flat on the screen in the ortho camera in the scene. We'll show you some of those later. But interact with fat rings on the tubes. Also note that as we move like this it won't move when we're over that. And we can also hit the uh, this is just in the um, first person. We can hit the, the space bar and pause that completely. Okay, let's close this now. We're interacting with the fat rings on the tubes to solve a simple puzzle. So now I'm using WASD, and check this out. This is Zim right here on this cylinder. So, and it snapped in. Let's go check out another one here. There are the little line. Note that I can't interact with that at the moment until I get close enough, and then I can interact with it. And so our little puzzle, do you get what our little puzzle is? Uh, we got to go to each one of these things and, and put it. There we are. Like that. Take it off again. So that is Zim. Um, let's see the state. If I hit the T key now, T, here is the first menu right there. There's the backing pattern for the floor. Here are all of the cylinders. So the cylinders are just <laughs> are just rectangles like that, and we're just sliding that along inside a Zim. This one we haven't done. It's the yellow one, but we can do it right here. There, we just did it right here. We still have the red one yet to do, and I think that's the last one. 
Isn't that cool? And you can also swipe these things as well to, to go across. Um, if the texture is there, so this is the texture, I can't swipe on the texture, then you have to use this thing. But if there's no texture, then we can swipe. Um, all right, let me go back again. I hit the T key. And I can't remember which ones we were looking at already. Did we do the orange one? We've done the orange one. The red one was the one that wasn't done. Uh, I guess we didn't do a pink one. So let's go and do the pink one. I can't remember the state we left it in. But it's a live state. Isn't that so cool? And are you ready? Dum, dum, dum. Yay! You have witnessed a momentum, momental, <laughs> monumental, there we go, a monumental moment. Whoa, it's a tongue twister. So isn't that cool? Wow, very nice. All right, let's try another one. You happy? Let's try one more. And I don't know when we want to go back in the code, or do we have to try them all more? Can you handle all more? Well, let's do uh, one more, and then we'll leave this bubbling. Come back to another bubbling. Here it is, the physics. Wow. Do you know what's going to happen? So there we have a Zim texture active on a cube. And are you ready? Wow, that's physics on the cube. Isn't that amazing? We have turned off the orbit zoom on the backing of the cube because uh, the way that Zim physics works is if you swipe across the if you swipe across the item, it um, it moves it, which is no problem. That's just uh, sort of built into the Zim physics. But when you're both swiping and moving the cube and swiping the balls, uh, I didn't like the feeling of that. So I've made it so that you can only use the orbit zoom outside, texture active. And if we press that, oh, uh, it went off to the Zim site. The reason we did that is if you hit the T key, oh, have I turned off the T key? Yes, we can turn off the T key and turn off obviously the pressing of the texture active there. The reason we did that is with physics, if you swipe through in the physics, it doesn't move the physics world. The rest of it moves, but not the physics world. Also, it has a limit of one physics uh, world per um, app, I guess. So use it wisely. You can actually probably, I haven't quite worked this out, but you can probably take the physics world and divide it up into uh, sections and apply the sections to different textures if you really need to. So if you're really needing to do that, uh, let us know and we can experiment with that with us. We haven't exactly tried it. Um, but that is pretty cool. There you've got physics on a texture and this could be on a model. Uh, we'll show it sort of on a model coming up or on a cylinder, etc. How exciting a sphere. Wow! Uh, I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. We're going to come back in another bubbling and take a look at the bottom three, and then we're going to go into some code. So if this is exciting for you, I uh, would love it if you came and joined us at zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack. Ask any questions, uh, talk to us about how we're doing all this stuff. We'd love to hear from you. Cheers.